Well, it's good to be back with all of you. As you know from last week, um, I was at, we all, my family was at, um, my mother's 70th birthday party. And um, it was a, uh, it was a good time. Um, I saw people that I hadn't seen since I was a kid again, and so it's funny seeing folks you haven't seen for 15 plus years, and they're like, oh, remember when you were, and I've got three kids running around, and um, yeah, it's just funny. So we had a good time. My mom was very happy we were there, and it was a big honor for her. Um, for those of you who don't know, my mother was a real pioneer in the, the law field, in Bruce's field. Um, she was the first pregnant uh, judge in the state of California with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's right, right, that's good. Um, yeah, and so it was, it, was, uh, it was exciting to see um, a lot of those women that she touched and mentored come and, and pay tribute and honor to her, and it was, it was nice. It was, it was fun. It meant a lot to her that we were there. So. And I heard you had fun with Don last week, so that's good. I heard, heard you guys had a good time with our buddy Don Muma, um, who's a wonderful, wonderful friend and ally and colleague and blessing to our family, so. It's good. It's good. I missed you all. I woke up on Sunday morning and it didn't feel right. It didn't, didn't feel right. Woke up in a different bed and didn't go to church and my whole week was altered dramatically. So, guess what we have today? A lot of scripture. Woo-hoo! We're going to be today. <laughs> Give me two weeks to load up and we're going to have a lot of scripture. Um, we're going to be in Acts chapter 27, verses 14 through 44. Acts 27, verses 14 through 44. It says this. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster. I'm going to pause here. I forgot to do my introduction. Paul is a captive. Got to remember to do this. Paul is a captive on a Roman vessel, and he is going to talk with... um, the emperor here, he's, he's going to give, or Caesar, he's going to give um, testimony to Jesus, of Jesus to the, to the, uh, the capital, and so he's a, he's a, he's a captive here, and the, and the soldiers make a poor decision. Paul warns them not to, because God has shown them they're going to get into trouble. He tells the soldiers they go out into the ocean anyway, and this picks up here where they're on the Roman uh, sailing ship. And it says that before very long, they're on their way to the capital, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Kauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. When the men had hoisted it aboard, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together, Fearing that they would run aground on the sandbars of Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm, the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Isn't there a movie after that that just came out? Robert Redford, anybody? Just me. (laughs) Verse 21. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Isn't that great? In the middle of the storm. You people didn't listen to me, and here we go. Then you, then, you would have been, then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. Verse 22. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. (laughs) Can't circle that one enough. 
Keep up your courage, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as He told me. Verse 26, Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea when about midnight the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that, th that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found that it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we were going to be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Even the sailors pray in the storm. Verse 30, in an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men save the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and it fell away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all, and he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. All together, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders and they hoisted the foresail into the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck the, a sandbar run aground. The bow struck fast and would not move and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to overboard first and get to land. The rest were there to get, on, were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Very uncommon in these days for many to survive, let alone everyone. Let's pray together. Lord God, as we look at storms and how to hold fast, we pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you that you are so magnificent in how you work in our lives as you did in Paul's. Lord, help us to know you better and understand you more intimately through our time in this word together in Jesus' name. Amen. You think about it, and most of us face a lot of storms in our lives. Some of you are laughing more than others. And I love how the Bible over and over and over again speaks of specific incidents in the lives of the great people the Scripture reveals to us and how those incidents can speak to our storms today. And we see Paul giving us a real foundation for how to stand strong in the face of some of the greatest challenges. Whether you are someone who has lost a loved one, someone who has seen a child struggle or hurt, someone who has uh, suffered injustice in the workplace or in your family or in your home. Um, we all deal with things that we wish were different. Uh, I heard a teacher named Dale Bruner, uh, who's actually uh, a close buddy of Don Mumaz at seminary. He's now a retired teacher from Whitworth, and he's over involved at Hollywood Press. And he talked about the fact that so much of the time, this is yesterday when I was over there, um, so much of the time we feel like we can't reveal the storms that are going on in our lives. You know, because it's hard to open that up, and then we don't know if we're going to be embraced or if the church is going to be able to encourage or help us in the midst of the storms of life 
that we face. And I think it's important for us as the church to understand that as we walk out the Word of God, we see grounding for the storms of our lives. We see a way. We see a path. We see clarity. We find victory. Too often, I think that the impulse can be to just meet someone in the place of brokenness and care for them, but never help them come out of the brokenness to a place of wholeness and victory and blessing. Some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen are people who have, who have endured a hardship and come through on the other side, encouraged and strong in the Lord, and then be able to walk with somebody else who's going through the same kind of a struggle, and then together they find victory. There's nothing more impactful than a strong testimony of someone who's overcome in the storms of life. And we pick up here with Paul. His captors, the Roman soldiers, and really he's showing them how to save their lives and his life and everybody else on the boat. And we see that, that Paul was special for several reasons. And, and, and he gives us a, a groundwork of how to stand strong. He gives us four anchors for how to weather the storms of life. Paul knew a few key things which I think for each of us it's important for us to know as believers. The first one is that he's a child of God. He knew he was a son of God. He knew he was a man that knew his mission and his purpose. And he was a man of faith in Jesus. When we know who we are and what our purpose is, we can walk it out with confidence. Most importantly, he was in fellowship with God because of who he was, he was anchored in the midst of the storm because he listened to and followed God's voice. The first anchor is this, and it's the anchor of God's presence. We see in verses 23 and 24, he says, Last night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. So he's saying, I've got a plan for you. You've got to go before Caesar, and God will give you the lives of everybody else who's sailing with you. Paul was reminded in the midst of his storm that he's never alone. And that's true for us, each of us. We're never alone. We're never alone in the midst of any hardship. It's so important for us to know that we're never alone. That God is always with us, and that those in our community, our church family, also walk with us, encouraging us in the things of God. Psalm 23, verse 4 reminds us, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is with us always. There's a story from a man named uh, Tony Campolo, who you guys know of. I've talked about, he talks, he talks about when he was a boy, his mom had, had, would hire a, uh, a local girl, a high school girl, to walk with him to school, and back when he was in the second grade, she'd walk with him in back, and every day her mom would give the girl, his mom would give the woman a nickel. And so one day Tony goes to her and says, Mom, I'm a big boy now. I'm, I'm going into the second grade, no more babysitter. So save the nickels. I'm going to do it on my own, inner city Philadelphia, right? That's where he walks around. And so for the next year, he went back and forth, being very careful, checking the streets, not talking to strangers. And a couple of years later, he, while sitting with his family, began to talk about how brave he was and how he didn't need anyone's help. And his mother began to laugh and said, didn't you know that I was behind you watching you back and forth every day? And oftentimes, we are not able to see that God is there. But he's there. And when we call on him, he shows up. He shows up every time he shows up. 
It might not be in exactly the way we think it's going to be, but he shows up. He's with us. His presence is always with us. When we, the day we say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, and the presence of God is always with us. Now, we can encounter it in greater measure in places like worship, or when we help people that are in need, but God's presence is always, always with us. The second anchor is this, the strong anchor of the promises of God, the Word of God. Acts uh, 27, verses 24 to 25, which we already read. The angel of God said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you, so keep up your courage. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. How many times have we seen in the Bible where God says something and people say, That sounds impossible, right? And what does God do? He always does what he promises. He always does what he promises. And for us, in our faith, we can, we can hold to his promises. Romans 4.21 says that what God promises, then he is able to perform. There are more than 7,800 promises from God to man in the Bible. 7,800 promises. And we know that what he promises, he is able to perform. He is able to do. So we can hold strong to the anchor of God's promises. The third one is this, the anchor of the plan of God. This is a verse that we talk about a lot, Jeremiah 29, 11, where he says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and to harm you. Not to harm you. Not to harm you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Paul knew that God had a plan. And I think that for each of us, we need to remember that God has a plan for us. And that he calls us to great things. Great understanding of him. Great knowledge of him. Great walking with him. That as far as we're willing, we're going to see him do great things in our lives. And the fourth anchor that we see here is the anchor of God's power. The power of God. Verse, uh, Acts 27, verse 44. In this way, everyone reached land safely. He was anchored in the power, in the ability of God. Luke 1, 37 reminds us, for nothing is impossible with God. Jeremiah 32, 20, uh, 32, 17. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. And I think that oftentimes we forget that God's powerful. And I want to encourage us to always, always be open to the fact that he can do anything. That he can do anything. That he has great plans and that nothing is beyond him. As we conclude, I want to talk about Romans 8.28. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Psalm 103, verses 2 through 5. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. When we're anchored in the truth, the love, the power, the reality, the word of God, any storm might come, but nothing will take us from where we need to be, which is strong with him. So let us not be discouraged. Let us not 
get dismayed or have a picture of God that is smaller than the reality of who He is. Let us be encouraged, trusting and knowing that He is always at work for our good and that He is able to do anything. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the account of Paul at the end of Acts and how in a situation that looked like utter death where the people that were involved had given up any hope of rescue. Lord God, let us see you at work in those ways in our lives. Lord, let us look to you, trust you, listen to you, and not rest on our own strength and our own understanding. And God, as we take that step of faith, might we experience the blessings, the power, the revelation of who you are and all that you can do in our lives. Let us be anchored, Lord, in those things which Paul was anchored and find the great victory that he saw every day of his life. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us spread the message. Click on the donate button below or go to shermanoakspc.org forward slash donate. And thank you.